Hello and welcome to the first in a series of video lectures introducing a second course in string theory. In this first lecture I will outline the first chapter on the notes on conformal field theory, often known as CFT for short. This is nothing but the field theory of a quantum theory with conformal symmetry. And it is a foundational part of any course on string theory, and additionally an important research subject in its own right. The chapter is split into three subsections. First, we must introduce the conformal symmetry itself. This is a symmetry which contains the usual space-time symmetries of Poincaré, i.e. rotations, boosts and translations, plus additional symmetries which we can put down to two operations called inversion and dilatation. Dilatation is simply a scaling transformation. Inversion is a slightly more subtle transformation taking a point to the same point divided by its norm square. We can in fact write conformal symmetry as an algebra which allows us to gain more information about it from the quantum perspective. In d equals 2, the algebra is in fact infinite dimensional, and is called the famous Virasoro algebra. The second section in the notes deals with the state operator correspondence. This states that in a conformal field theory there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between a state in the theory and an operator. This is vital in string theories, which turn out to be conformal field theories on the world sheet, because it allows you to represent a string state insertion as an operator. In fact, this state operator correspondence is, as you might expect, closely linked to conformal symmetry, because the conformal symmetry allows you to perform a map between a sphere and a cylinder in order to prove the state operator correspondence via path integral methods. This is most e easily shown in d equals 2, but can be extended to higher dimensions. The third section covers the operator product expansion. Or OPE for short. This is important in the context of string theory as it allows us to determine the normal ordered product of vertex operators required for string amplitudes. What's more, it is heavily linked with 
conformal symmetry by virtue of the fact that parts of the OPE are determined by the ward identities for so-called primary operators. Mathematically, the operator product expansion takes the following form. It says that the product of two operators A and B at separated points can be written as a linear combination of operators at one of the points weighted by some powers of the distance between the points. Of course, as I hinted at earlier, the link between the state operator correspondence and the operator product expansion comes from identifying states as vertex operators, an observation which will become much more important later in the course. At this point, I recommend that you consult the lecture notes for much more detail on all of the sub subjects we have discussed so far. Thank you for listening.